Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light. Now, if you are a budding detective, as in you're in the direct entry detective program uh, as a potential recruit, and you've applied to a force like the Metropolitan Police or there's several other forces across the country who are now recruiting directly into the position of detective constable, then this video is for you. Because at some point, you're going to go through an in-force assessment which could involve an interview, but it could also involve an entry exercise. Uh, see other videos that are prepared to help you with that. And it's probably going to involve a presentation as well, where they're going to give you some kind of crime conundrum and you're going to play who done it. You're going to play the part of a detective and you're going to give the interviewers a briefing about what's happened, what a lot of the issues are with the incident, the crime that's occurred and how you intend to progress it. So you're gonna to have to give a detailed briefing. Now in this video, I'm gonna set the scene for you. I'm gonna describe a crime that's just taken place. It's come in as log 1516. Male assaulted, paramedics already on scene, believed serious. So I'm gonna expand on that a little bit for you. So I'm gonna set the scene with this particular crime that's occurred and from there, I'm going to move on to several other videos where I'm going to talk to you about the structure that you would utilize to provide a briefing to the assessors. One of them's probably going to be a detective sergeant or a detective inspector. And they're just going to sit back and go, right, you've got 20 minutes. Tell me all about it. What's happened? And what are you going to do? And you're going to have to have something pretty solid if you want to get past that individual. Um, now, I don't want to make out that they're not going to be friendly or anything like that, but they're just going to sit back and let you do exactly what's on the side of the tin, which is the briefing. So let's dive in and find out a little bit more about log 1516 that's come in. So it's male assaulted. The paramedics were already passing and they were flagged down by a member of the public unknown member of the public. So there's something. We've got an unknown member of the public who's flagged the paramedics down and said, at the end of Waverley Drive, um, uh, X1 there, I've just marked the spot, X1, uh, we have a male who's unconscious who looks like they've been assaulted. So they've got head injuries, uh, certainly looks very, very serious, uh, unconscious, and they've been taken to the local hospital. Uh, the police have turned up and started to uh, protect the scene. They put a scene guard around X1 um, and also done a little bit of a cursory search. Uh, by the way, this is at 23.45 hours this incident came in. And uh, they've done a little bit of a search and they've found uh, X2 there, that's the alleyway at the bottom of Waverley Drive. All of these are terraced houses at the bottom of Waverley Drive um, on the west, sorry, the east side of it. East side of Waverley Drive, north is up there, east is that way. Um, they have found a baseball bat with blood on it. So this could be a weapon that has been used in this serious assault. Also on the floor near to where the unconscious male was found, uh, a driving license in the name of Maria O'Neill. We don't know whether that is connected or not. It could be. We just don't know at this moment in time. Um, so a little bit of a description about what else is in the area. Um, we've got retail shops on New Tree Park Road here, which is at the junction with Waverley Drive. And uh, we've got a pub there, the Fox and Hound, which was open. OK, we're going to take it that this is before COVID or after COVID. So the Fox and Hound was open and uh, it was believed to be quite busy that night. Uh, retail units and takeaways uh, here. So some of the takeaways might have actually been open at the time. Um, the incident log continues. I've got access to it here. Um, you will, you'll get access to it as well on the day. Uh, but the incident log also states that the licensee at the Fox and Hound heard some kind of commotion about uh, a few minutes before around half past 11, uh, 20 to 11, sorry, 12, uh, half past 11, 20 to 12, around then. Uh, heard some kind of commotion, uh, screaming, um, some screaming, some shouting, uh, a woman's voice screaming, unintelligible, don't know what they were screaming, um, and also the sound of screeching tyres. So it would appear as though individuals who have assaulted this individual, this unconscious male, uh, may have 
arrived in a car and may have left by car, but we don't know. We've got to keep an open mind here. This is all part of the investigative mindset is that, you know, we've got to decide what we actually know and what we don't know. So what else can I tell you? That's it, really. There's not much else. So just to recap, uh, the males in, in uh, hospital, they're unconscious. Uh, nothing on them to identify them and they are unconscious. We do not know who that individual is. Uh, we could do with knowing, couldn't we? Um, we found a baseball bat uh, just there uh, that's got uh, blood on it and a driving license in the name of Maria O'Neill uh, found very close to the unconscious individual. Uh, lots of residential properties there. Quite sure someone's seen something or heard something. Uh, YouTube Park Road there, lots of retail units. What are you thinking now? CCTV? Uh, you're thinking about takeaways? Who actually witnessed it? Um, fox and Hound. Um, was this individual in the Fox and Hound? Actually, a little bit of information from the paramedics. Smelt strongly of intoxicants. So we can presume that we, they might have been in the Fox and Hound. We don't know though, do we? There's a lot we need to find out here. And this is the task, folks. This is what we're going to be going through. I'm going to talk to you in the next video about a uh, model that you'd utilize for the briefing and this model that you'd utilize is one that, that you can start using to pull together all the threads that exist here um, I don't know how long you're going to be given to prepare for this but it's always good to have a structured approach that you can utilize no matter what all right no matter what so I'm going to leave you with that for the moment folks uh, if you want to find out a little bit more by the way about the uh, courses that I provide to support people like you who are budding detectives, then check the links below. Also, if you're a serving police officer, you might be watching this just out of interest. Because um, I'm going to be talking about things like AI March, and you might be thinking, I've heard all about that. What's AI March all about? Um, it's from Jessup. Uh, what's Jessup all about? Uh, well, I'll tell you more, and you can find out more if you're a serving regular police officer by clicking on the link below. That's the link to the Facebook group for serving police officers and also there's a link below to the Facebook group for budding police officers. That one's got over 16,000 members in it which is just incredible. Uh, serving officers is pushing almost 3,000 but it's only two months old so that's doing quite well. Right so in the next video I'm going to talk to you about the briefing structure that we'd utilize and from there we're going to go into an incredible amount of detail but only if you're on one of my courses. I know I'm teasing you a little bit there. In the next video, which will be on YouTube and Facebook, um, out in the public domain, I'm going to talk to you about the briefing model that you'd utilise. The next videos are going to be for clients only, clients of the interview course, um, because it's going to, we're going to go really deep dive into the various parts, the various elements of the briefing model. So I hope that makes sense for you. I hope you're excited to find out what happens next in this uh, quite serious crime that you're going to have to deal with as a detective. And by the way, in case any of you are thinking, would I have to deal with this sort of thing? Yeah, you would. <laughs> as an inspector, I would have been asking straight away for a detective uh, to be informed and to take charge of this incident in conjunction with one of my sergeants. So there, this is entirely plausible, folks. Um, I'm excited now. Uh, we're going to do some crime solving. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye for now.